U-boats, the dreaded wolves of the sea in World War II, preying on vital supply convoys far out in the wastes of the North Atlantic, or prowling the coast run daring inshore campaigns that almost won the war for Germany. Winston Churchill, Britain's famous wartime prime minister, said that the U-boat menace was the only thing that really worried him, because the damage they inflicted was immense, the economic problems they engendered enormous, and the technological race they created complex as the British and Americans scrambled for ways to defeat that menace. But the U-boat campaign of World War II was but the second and longer act of a play that had opened 25 years earlier, when the U-boat had first entered proper combat against Britain and latterly America during the second half of the Great War, World War I. The Germans had menaced Britain's vital shipping lanes, attempting to blockade the island nation and starve her either into surrender or to the negotiating table. The might of the Royal Navy fought a long and difficult battle to keep the sea lanes open, but German U-boats sank almost 5,000 ships, including infamously the transatlantic liner Lusitania, one of the events that brought the United States into the war on Britain's side. At war's end, the victorious powers determined that Germany would not be permitted to build or operate submarines ever again. Such was their effectiveness during the conflict. The German navy, as well as surrendering its battleships, cruisers and destroyers, had to hand over its U-boats. In total, Germany had commissioned 375 U-boats during World War I, losing 178 along with 5,000 men. About 172 U-boats were surrendered to the victorious powers in 1918-19, the remaining balance of existing boats having been scuttled or interned in neutral countries. Many U-boats ended up in the French Navy as war reparations. Others were given to the Imperial Japanese Navy, then an ally, for technical study. Britain took the majority, along with a few given to the United States. Many were broken up for scrap or used as targets. So it was that three Type UB-3 U-boats that surrendered at Harwich in Essex on the 27th of March 1919 still exist today. UB-144, 145 and 150 were all identical. The UB-3 was a coastal submarine, the Germans building 96 between 1916 and 1918, with 89 being commissioned. 37 of these boats were lost on operations or to accidents, but the type wrought havoc on the British and Americans, sinking 521 merchant ships and seven warships, including the British battleship HMS Britannia. With a crew of 34 and a range of 8 to 10,000 miles, the UB-3 class was armed with 10 torpedoes and an 8.8 .8 or 10.5 centimeter deck gun. Three of them, UB-144, 145 and 150, were taken to Chatham Naval Dockyard in Kent in 1919 as potential subjects for experimental work, but in the event the boats were never used. Instead, in 1920, they were sold to the company of M. Lynch & Sons at Rochester, Kent, for £2,000 each, and Mr. Lynch proceeded to strip the boats of all reusable materials, the engines being sold on, for example, for use in various business concerns, including cement works. The stripped hulks were then towed to an area of the Medway estuary and dumped in 1922. And there the three U-boats have remained for 100 years, sitting at Upper Stoke off the Medway River, exposed at low tide, slowly being eaten by rust and marine life. Some attempts were made to scrap the U-boats during World War II, and two of the hulks are very badly demolished, but one, often misidentified as the type UB-3, UB-122, is fairly complete. Incidentally, UB-122 is clearly listed as scuttled in the English Channel in British Admiralty Records for 1921 and can't be the U-boat in the Medway today.
also, due to the state of the three wrecks today, no one knows which boat is which. But they are UB-144, 145 and 150. That much is known beyond doubt. So what will become of the more complete U-boat? Perhaps someone will one day salvage it for a museum. There is only one complete German World War I era U-boat in existence today. UB-1, a training boat that is preserved at the Deutsches Museum in Munich. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.